Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May divine peace, blessings, and light be with you, brothers and sisters. As human beings, we have a unique ability to both receive and to transmit. Now, as human beings, we are in many ways like an antenna. And an antenna can both receive and transmit. It can receive and broadcast. In the same way, we have the capacity and the ability to both receive and to broadcast. And so much of this has to do with choice, the ability to choose, to choose what we tune to and to choose to what we broadcast. And so much of life, it comes down to this, to choice. Ultimately, we have a choice between paradise and hell, between goodness and light versus darkness and evil, between Allah Almighty and between illusion. All of life is seeking to teach us how to choose, how to choose better. And we're given so many opportunities. We're given day after day after day to learn how to choose better. If we are wise, we will follow the wisdom and the guidance of those who came before us, of the prophets, of the messengers, of the saints, of the inheritors of the prophets. If we're not wise, we'll try to figure out on our own and waste lifetime after lifetime, generation after generation, trying to figure things out, only at the end to slowly inch our way towards what has already been revealed. And so much of Islam, so much of faith and religion is about creating an environment that is conducive to faith, to goodness, to light, to beauty, and to the evolution of the human being. So much of religion, especially of Islam, is about creating the right environment, the environment that would support health, happiness, and harmony for human beings. And the early believers, they understood this. And so they came up with a classification. They understood that the world can be divided into two domains. And these were called in Arabic, Dar al-Harb and Dar al-Islam. Meaning the domain, right, Dar al-Islam is the domain of Islam. And Islam, of course, means submission, surrender, the will of God, its root word being salam, which also then denotes peace, tranquility, harmony, health, and happiness. Harb is the opposite. It means war. It means conflict. So the early believers understood that there were two aspects to the world, or two types of worlds that we could live in, that we could exist in. And in this video, we're going to take this a little bit further. So they classified again the world into Dar al-Islam, number one, and number two, Dar al-Harb. Dar al-Islam was the domain, the world, the societies and the culture, the civilization in which Islam was present which means it gave human beings the best opportunity for realizing a life of excellence, a life of beauty, a life of perpetual evolution. Now, I do want to point out, right, some people may be coming across this video, and both amongst believers and non-believers, between Muslims and those who are not Muslim, and they may think, based on what we see today, Islam, evolution, excellence and culture, beauty, what are you talking about? Unfortunately, the world that we have today, the Muslim ummah today, is so far removed from the excellence and beauty of Islam as it was revealed and as it was made manifest by the early believers, that it's the difference between night and day. And the Prophet of Allah prophesied that such a day would come, that there would be a time in which there's nothing left of Islam but its name. But that's a topic for another video. Real Islam, real faith, real religion is about the evolution of humanity, the evolution of the human being both individually and collectively. It's about helping the human being realize his or her greatest potential as a deputy, as a vicegerent of the Almighty, which means to be a representative of divine light, of mercy, of compassion, of excellence, of beauty, of light, of love, of patience, of tolerance, of strength, of forgiveness, and so on. So these two domains exist. Now, we may not have as easy a choice nowadays which one we will live in, right? Because really the truth is that the bulk of the world now has been culturally taken over by secularism, by faithlessness, by unbelief. And so almost no matter where you live, you're still experiencing this experience, this domain, this environment that is actually not particularly Islamic, not faith-based. We live in secular environments. Now, Dar al-Islam, the first one, the domain of Islam, the domain of faith, the domain of light, the beauty, the domain of beauty and of excellence, is a domain of peace, because that is its goal. Again, we're going to separate what so many people now are doing or not doing precisely as a result of them not following the religion, not following faith. And so they've ended up in a situation where they identify with Islam, but yet are so far removed from its reality. We're leaving that aside for the moment. 
the goal of faith and religion, of all faiths and religions, of all prophets and messengers of God, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, وسلم, peace and blessings upon all of them, was to create environments of light and beauty, environments that are connected, environments that support the connection of the human being to the Creator. And those environments help engender peace, harmony between, between human beings. Environments that are based in faithlessness end up becoming environments that ultimately will lead to conflict. Right? That is the definition, that's the meaning of how it means war or conflict. Those environments lead to conflict, inner conflict and outer conflict. Now let's remember that the most basic block, the most basic constituency of any society is the family unit. And all traditional faiths and religions support the family unit. However, the modern world, modern culture, progressive ideas, man-made ideas actually do the opposite. They lead to the disintegration of the family unit in conflict within the most sacred domain of all, the home. So when it comes to these two worlds, Dar al-Islam, Dar al-Harb, the domain of peace, the domain of faith, spirituality, light, and the domain of conflict, secularism, faithlessness, they have both an internal component and an external component. And we can see when societies become so far removed from faith that divine purpose becomes lost, and all that's left then is material purpose. This leads to the ever-accelerating pace of life, to abuse, to exploitation, to an ever-widening gap between those who have and those who have not, between the elite and the norm. And again, this is nothing new. The greatest tyrants in the history of the world were those who had so much and yet ended up enslaving everyone else to serve them. That is the end result of a faithless materialist system or culture, ideology, a paradigm. So Darul Islam really is Darul Iman. It is the domain of faith. It is a place, it is an environment in which there is faith. Darul Harb becomes domain of unbelief, of kufr, Darul Kufr. It is a domain, it is the environment of unbelief, of faithlessness. Now, what we want to do in this video is focus on the inner dimension, Darul Iman, Darul Islam. How to connect with and experience that at least internally, because we do not necessarily have control over the outward. If you do, then migrate, then move, or, or be grateful if you're in an environment that is conducive to faith. To whatever degree possible, we as human beings must learn and must act accordingly in the choosing of Islam, of Iman, of faith, of light, of goodness, of beauty. And note that this will always be against the ego, against the nafs. Because the human nafs, if unchecked, will always lead to evil. In the Quran, Allah Almighty says that it is the commanding self, nafsul amara bisu, it's the self that we all have as human beings. Nafsul amara bisu, this is the basis of our existence. It is the self that commands towards evil, towards transgression, towards excess. That must always be kept in check with faith, with excellence, with discipline. So if you, if we are living in a non-Islamic environment, if we're, living in an, if we're living in an environment that is not based in faith, right? any faith, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, a faith-based worldview, paradigm, religion, and of course, not to excesses and extremes. But if we're living in an environment that is faithless, for the most part, we're surrounded by faithlessness, right? That is secularism, taking the sacred out of daily life. We have to know and recognize that these environments now become environments that are not supporting peace, not inner peace. And you can see this clearly in the world that we live in. We have greater peace and comfort and security on the external level than perhaps ever before, yet greater inner turmoil increasing levels of depression, unhappiness, misery, stress, anxiety, fear than ever before in the history of the world on a global scale, on a collective scale. Our souls are not at peace. Our souls are not tuned to harmony and to light and to beauty. They are tuned to materialism, to matter. And this always leads to dispersion. Matter, materialism always leads to fragmentation, schism, separation, conflict. So we must recognize where we are. We've got to take account, we've got to look and see and acknowledge, okay, we are in an environment that is not supportive of faith. And we must now consciously learn to choose faith and to tune to faith, to tune to light, to tune to goodness, to tune to excellence. Again, as human beings, we are like antennas. 
we can tune. We have a choice what we tune to, what we focus on, what we connect with. If we don't make that choice consciously, it will be made for us. And never before has this been more true than now when we are constantly being bombarded by media, by social media, by the internet, by content that is constantly being broadcast at us and telling us what to tune to. And it literally is called broadcasting, right? And what we watch, we watch programming. So as people of conscience, people of conscientiousness, as believers, as human beings who are choosing faith, we must learn to consciously choose what we tune to. And doing so is choosing what we connect to, what we connect with. And we've got to remember that as human beings, we cannot do it alone. None of us can do it alone. Islam, faith, was always a communal experience. And so one of the most important things that we can do is to connect with or form brotherhoods, sisterhoods of faith, of light, of excellence, of remembrance, to form communities, congregations of remembrance, congregations of faith, congregations of belief. And especially when living in environments that are not conducive to faith, we must continually affirm faith through choosing, through practice. We must continually tune to the light. Otherwise, we will be lost in the darkness of materialism. And materialism, by definition, is darkness, right? It matter is that which prevents the transmission of light. It's what blocks or reflects, refracts the transmission of light. It doesn't allow light to pass through. That's literally how we see and experience matter. Matter, by definition, is the veil over light. And the more that our culture and our lives become dominated by materialism, by the focus on materialism, by focus on the things of this world, on the world of the senses, we cut ourselves off, we block ourselves off, we veil ourselves from the light. Now in the modern world, the current is strong, the current towards unbelief, the current towards disbelief, the current towards materialism and darkness, the current towards death, because that is the death of the soul. It's the death of the heart. It leads to depression, hopelessness, despair, fear, and anxiety. That is the result of a heart that is disconnected from the light, from God. The current is extremely strong in the world that we live in. And so we must constantly choose faith. We must constantly tune to and connect with faith. We must constantly tune to light, belief, iman, daral islam. And we have to learn how to use media very consciously, intentionally. We must use media very selectively. Again, we are being bombarded. And if we're not careful, literally, we're being hacked by social media, by apps, by programming, and by broadcasting because we live in what is called the attention economy. The more that we pay attention to something, the more power we give that thing, and the more money, right? it all comes down to money, wealth, and profit. The more that we can watch YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or anything else, the more money those corporations make, the more money those platforms make because they're constantly selling to us and they're selling us too, by the way. You've got to know that nothing is for free. You are selling your attention. You're selling your soul. We are. We are selling ourselves when we become unconscious consumers of the content that these platforms provide. So we've got to become very conscious, very selective, very intentional in what we consume, what we tune to. And so I would suggest identifying sources of content that connect you with faith, that connect you with light, that connect you with the Creator, with God, with the Divine, that connect you with hope and with purpose. Identify and tune to sources of content that help awaken your spirituality, that help awaken and cultivate your spiritual connection. And then stay plugged in. On a daily basis, we must actively stay in remembrance, which means to focus constantly. Now remember how important remembrance is. Again, human beings by nature are forgetful. In Arabic, the word insan is the same root to mean to forget. So the human being in Arabic by definition is he or she who is prone, who tends towards forgetfulness. And so we must constantly remind ourselves we must constantly stay in remembrance and by making remembrance a way of life, a habit. So identify resources, identify platforms, identify broadcasters that support you in your remembrance, in your remembrance of God, 
in your remembrance of your purpose and reality in remembrance of who you truly are. Whether you're on YouTube, whether you're listening to podcasts, right, with this platform, with this channel, I do my best to stay committed to this purpose, right, to the purpose of remembrance and supporting our growth and our connection as human beings. So there's this YouTube channel. You can find others that support you as well. As far as podcasts go, I have and we have the Soul of Islam Radio. Again, you can find others that you feel support you in your connection, that awaken your spirituality, that help you connect with your creator. Identify them and stay plugged in, stay connected. I also have the Border Point educational platform. There's a lot of content there, courses and programs in structured formats to help stay on purpose, to stay connected, to stay tuned in, to stay plugged in to faith, to goodness, to light, to excellence. And again, as a way of life, we have to institute connection as a daily part of our lives. Connection to Darul Islam, the world, the possibility, the paradigm of peace, of faith, of light. Now, all of life, every single day is this. Are we taking a step forward or are we slipping and falling behind? Are we moving towards God or are we moving away from God? Are we moving towards truth? Are we moving towards goodness, towards light, towards excellence, towards beauty? Are we moving towards our true selves or are we slipping and falling behind? If we do not take conscious and active control of our lives, we will be taken by the current of the world, the current of dunya, the current of the materialist paradigm, and we will lose ourselves, we will drown, and we will die in the ocean of dunya, the world. Yet by taking active and conscious control of ourselves and tuning to faith, choosing faith, both inwardly and outwardly, whatever changes you may need to make or can make in your life, even to the point of hijra, right, migration for the sake of God, for the sake of his messenger, for the sake of truth, for the sake of a way of life that supports you in your purpose, then nothing can be greater. Now, if we don't make this a conscious way of life, a way of living, we will ultimately lose ourselves. And not only lose ourselves, we will lose everything. We will lose the rewards, the true reward that is available and prepared for humanity in eternity. So, beloved brothers and sisters, we have two worlds that we can choose to connect to, tune to, be a part of, live in. The world of faith, the world of light, the world of beauty, the world of purpose, which is Dar al-Islam, or its opposite, Dar al-Harb, in which we will ultimately lose everything that matters. We may end up with a lot of stuff, but we will ultimately lose what matters. And all of religion is to protect, to preserve, to augment that which truly matters, that which truly gives human beings happiness, that which contributes to the health of the human being, physically, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. That's one of the great purposes of faith and religion, to help human beings live lives that are healthy, harmonious, that lead to happiness. May Allah Almighty give us wisdom to follow the footsteps and the ways of the prophets and messengers of God. Beloved brothers and sisters, human beings, come to faith. Stay connected to faith. Choose faith. In this world of ever-increasing unbelief and faithlessness, in this onslaught of unbelief, of kufr, choose faith. Choose faith. Be amongst the brothers and sisters that choose faith, just as were those who in the times of the prophets had to choose faith against all odds, against the worlds and environments that they were living in. They instead sided with the prophets of God. They accepted some level of hardships and difficulties upon themselves for the sake of belief. We must do so as well. Faith must be earned. May Allah Almighty grant you, myself, May he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us strong and unshakable, absolute faith to your divine and eternal success. Fi amanullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.